Hello, and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And this is Mark Florence. And today we're talking about Urban Legends Final Cut. Okay, so this movie came out in the year 2000. It had a budget of $14 million. It made $38 million at the box office. And just so you know, Mark, we did not know this going in because we recently rewatched the first Urban Legends movie. Um, but the writer of this one sought a wacky tone compared to, you know, the tone of the first movie, which I don't think was wacky. But remember what we said this movie felt like a combination of at the beginning? I think you wrote it down. <laughs> I got to look at my thing here. I don't think I wrote it down. <laughs> we said it felt like a combination of Scream, Scary Movie, and something else. Do you have that written down or no? Yeah, I wrote down Ego Bing seemed like a mix of Scream, Scary Movie, and Final Destination. I don't know what e- Ego Bing means. Uh, you were probably drunk when you wrote that, so I don't know. But, okay, so this movie starts out with... Uh, This airplane scene, and I'm like, okay, that's the woman from Legally Blonde, the actress. And, like, they're partying on this plane, and it just feels kind of cheesy. Oh, I said also Final Destination is the other thing. Um, But it was like, wait a minute. Uh, This has a totally different tone, but guess what? It's actually a movie within a movie. I kind of sensed that like halfway through the opening scene because it just seems so ridiculous. And it was right. Uh, the The best scene, in my opinion, was uh, a guy and a lady going to the bathroom and they're getting it on. And someone says the plane's going down and then he's going down in her at the same time. Oh, puns. How fun. <laughs> they do have a Twilight Zone reference because, you know, this is Urban Legends Final Cut. And so they're saying like, oh, um, the the thing from Twilight Zone was actually based on Urban Legend. And, you know, a girl is like thinking that she sees something on the wing. But, you know, that doesn't really come into play. But they do reference it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that would come into play more. It really didn't. And then they do the cutaway to like how they're on a movie set. So, kind of a good introduction to the movie. Um, they we we find out that they're at quote unquote the greatest film school that ever existed. Which I'm like, wow, that is like super arrogant. And would any place actually call themselves that i mean what you can go to film school doesn't mean you're gonna make a great film right yeah but if you win the uh alfred hitchcock award you're gonna have a three movie deal minimum oh spoiler alert so this is what i want to know from you jennifer morrison she is the the star of this movie one of the first scenes in this film is that she is walking at night to the library while in college to go do some research. Mark, how often did you go to the library at all, let alone at night? I didn't go to the library that often, and I probably didn't go that often at night. But we had the internet. We could use that. Yeah, you know, that's fair. That's fair. You were in college post the year 2000, so I get it. Exactly. Thank you for understanding. Now... My favorite thing about the whole movie is that Joey Lawrence was in it. I just, I kind of feel bad for the guy, though, because every time you see him, you're just like, hey, that's Joey Lawrence. Like, you know, you can't take him seriously. I know. And as we discovered throughout this rewatch, he never said whoa in this film. And if he had, it would have knocked it down a few pegs for me, probably. You know, because that would have been like two on the nose. But was he on Dancing with the Stars? Did we confirm this last night? Wait, it would have taken it down for you? Like, if he would have said, whoa, it would have brought it up for me. Like, I wish he would have said, whoa, at some point. But yeah, I I don't think we confirmed he was on Dancing with the Stars, but I'm like 99% sure he was. Maybe we should confirm that before moving on. I don't know. Uh, did you notice that there's this scene in a bar and... They are drinking Cosmos, 
And so Cosmos, as if you know, if you remember back in the year 2000, um, they were super popular, I think, because people were drinking them on Sex in the City. And so when they order two more Cosmos, they're just like, hey, bartender, she like whistles, which I've never done that. But she's like, two more over here. They're already made. They're like on a tray ready to go. So apparently people are just ordering ordering Cosmos left and right. Yeah, they had like 30 just sitting there. So maybe it was like Cosmo night or something. I don't know. But yeah, it was interesting. Okay. Did you confirm if Joey Lawrence was on Dancing with the Stars? Yes. He was on season three. And it says Joseph Lawrence Magnona Jr. or something. So that's his real name. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, so there's the um, the woman who gets roofied at the bar, P.S. She ends up in a bathtub full of ice. And this is the urban legend of um, a kidney or an organ getting harvested. And we actually wrote about this in our first book, The Science of Monsters. So check it out because it's super dark and and actually really creepy about how much like a kidney goes for on the black market and also how many organs have actually been harvested in real life in the world. Yeah, that's crazy I mean, that that stuff even exists. Like, but yeah, they got to be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Mark, apparently you have not read our book. <laughs> um, I'm just acting like I didn't. You should just plead the fifth at this point. <laughs> now, there's another actor in this movie. Well, Anthony Anderson's in it. Now, what he was in, what was he in originally? Well, I don't know. I know him from Blackish. Um, I don't know what else people recognize him from, but, you know, he's like a legit, like, sitcom star now. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was cool that he was in it. So I guess I'm just naming actors at this point. Also, like we, I, I know you said, I wonder where this was shot, like filmed. And um, I looked it up because you're like, this college looks pretty cool. It was actually filmed in Toronto at Trent University. That is actually the college where they did the exterior shots. Yeah, that was a cool uh, campus. With the, Was the tower thing real too? Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, and then I also thought this one other guy was the Shermanator from American Pie, but... It wasn't. It was somebody else. Wow. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> cool story, bro. Now, um, another horror reference. I already mentioned that they brought up Twilight Zone. Um, there's also a Black Christmas reference because a girl gets suffocated by like a, a dry cleaning bag, if you remember this scene, Mark. And that happens in the movie Black Christmas. And there's also um, the reboot, which Meg and I talked about on the podcast and we really enjoyed. So just so you know. Cool, cool. Oh, also, I'm um, n- naming another person in the movie, Eva Mendes. Yes, and she is Ryan Gosling's woman. So good for you too. Hey, Mark, this college, which a lot of colleges in films have rowing teams, and it's always like, wow, that is so awesome and prestigious. Have you ever rowed, like in a rowboat or rowed like? competitively and what do you think about rowing i've never i've never rowed on like that kind of a boat um i roll rowing is a cool like it might be called crew or something i don't know but it's a cool like east coast like preppy sport type deal um which i've never done but yeah it's a it's a cool thing in a lot of movies so that's all i can say about it. you know um wait weren't the Winklevoss twins rowers in um, yeah. that Facebook movie. Yeah, yeah. See, the preppies. <laughs> yes, true. Now, what I want to say is, I've never rowed like that, but I have been in a rowboat, and I feel like I'm really good at rowing. Mark, you know why? Because I was in Finland, and I was rowing a rowboat as my relatives fished, and I was super good at like doing it subtly and quietly so that we could keep moving, basically like trolling, but without scaring the fish. Do you think that they were just um, humoring me and I'm actually a terrible rower? No, I think you're probably a really good rower. Thank you. Yeah. Your parents have a rowboat at their cabin that we use too, so. But I mean, yeah. 
can't really be good or bad at it. You just do it. So. Oh. Okay. So what what are you saying about the sport of rowing then? Well, that's a whole different deal, though. <laughs> Don't they all have to be like <clears throat> synchronized? Yeah, that's true. And one, one guy at the front like tells him to roll. That's that's the job I want. Ah, cool, cool. They were drinking Fruitopia in this movie. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, that is so nine late nineties, like two thousand, right? Like I don't uh that doesn't even exist anymore, does it? Not not to my knowledge, no. I mean we're not probably not gonna talk about the plot very much because this movie was pretty not great, but there is a twin element, so that was kinda interesting. Wow. Way <laughs> to like spoil your opinion without us actually talking about the plot. And guess what? Like, I was enjoying this movie. I I know that it is super low on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it was like 9% or something. But I appreciated it for what it was. They watched some actual footage of a death. If you remember, someone swapped out the reel of, like, the dailies, quote-unquote, of, like, the footage they were shooting for her urban legend movie. Um, but someone swapped out the footage of her friend who was from legally blonde and she actually got murdered do you remember that like that's pretty clever Uh, i don't remember that part so they think that they're watching like footage from the movie that they shot and they're like wow she's such a terrible actress when she pretends to die she's terrible but then they really showed her dying and they're like wow that was a great take now i remember that yes no she was the worst worst actress ever but then when they cut to her actually dying she was really good so Okay, so P.S., the twin element that Mark was just talking about, he is also in Legally Blonde. He's Reese Witherspoon's boyfriend who she follows to Harvard, but he's a douchebag and she doesn't end up with him anyway, so whatever. Also, speaking of people in this movie, Anson Mount is in this movie, the guy with the floppy hair. And I'm like, Mark, you do not, you will not believe like what he looks like. And who he is. He's the guy from Hell on Wheels on that AMC show about building the railroad post-Civil War era. And he is 100% or 112% not the same person, right? Yeah, I mean, he got older, but it wasn't that much longer. Um, I just, I think it's that late 90s look that's just so weird. Like, I noticed, like, a lot of sideburns. Like, I used to kind of have that same look with, like, sideburns. I don't think people really do that anymore. No, it was the sideburns and the floppy hair and definitely the clean-shaven face. And now it's more about, like, beards and, you know, shaved head sometimes or not. But I think this floppy hair, clean-shaven thing and, and, like you said, sideburns, makes people look super young and it absolutely did for Anson Mount. Now the killer in this movie is wearing for his like Jason mask kind of thing is wearing a fencing mask. And do you remember Mark? Like he walks in and there's a piano and he starts playing. I'm saying he, because we know the killer ends up being a he. So I'm not trying to misgender or assume anything, but we know. Um, he starts playing random bass notes on the, the piano, and it's like basically writing their own horror theme song. That was a cool scene, yeah, where he's just hitting him. Wasn't he just hitting that same key over and over again, basically? So that was cool. So I was thinking, have you ever tried fencing? No, but um, I wanted to sign Campbell up for it a couple years ago because He's into theater and like fencing plays a part in a lot of, you know, classic Shakespeare plays. Uh, But it's really hard to get into. There's very few classes and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of obscure. So I think at the Renaissance Festival, my brother and I, you could fence against each other where you you both had like a balloon. You had like two balloons on your helmet and the other person tried to pop them. That's my fencing experience. So who won? I'm, I'm, I have to think I did, but I can't remember. Wow. Okay. Interesting. And then I saw one more thing that said fencing is like the perfect uh, social distancing sport because you're like already wearing a mask and if someone gets within six feet, of you, you get to hit them with a sword. Yes, that it's true. Now, if you remember this outdoor scene by a lake 
she's like running down this huge thing of stairs. Uh, shout out to one of our very first episodes on Horror Rewind. This stairway down to the lake reminded me of the movie Blood Hook. And if you haven't seen this gem of a horror film, you need to because it was shot in Wisconsin. It's very cheesy, gory, wonderful. It's one of my favorites. I used to rent it all the time at my local video store, which, you know, got torn down. And that's really sad for me. It was the Cherry Corner store. It no longer exists, Mark. So the opening scene, going back to that, I know that this is definitely going back in time, but something I read about this movie was that they had a tight budget, which a tight budget for 14 million. I mean, that doesn't seem so tight, but, um, the opening scene was written to be shot on a cruise ship, but they found out that an airplane set was left over from another movie. And so they rewrote the scene in order to be shot on an airplane, which, you know what? I, I mean, it worked and they got to do the mile high club and going down, um, joke which i guess a ship could be going down to that's interesting uh and you said it made 38 million and only cost 14 so i mean that's pretty good but yeah no i didn't notice i don't even know what they would have done with the ship thing so i know i it actually i think it worked out just fine no i don't want to spoil the ending for everybody but so i'll wait for two seconds (laughs) so the killer you know they're Making you think it could be all these different people. But it ends up being the professor guy. So I thought that was interesting with Kelly being a, a professor herself. I know. I, I felt kind of uh, smited. And it was it was funny because he just had this like vendetta because he didn't get his career in Hollywood. And they, they say the line, the adage, uh, if you those who can't do, teach. And, um, I, but I also saw someone post the other day on some social media that like, but those who can actually teach because they know how to do it. And so they can teach others. So those who can teach can teach, um, and those who can, can, but I don't know, maybe that's just me, you know, feeling bad about being a communications instructor. I don't know. So you don't know how to communicate. So you teach it. Yeah. Right. So. I know. See, so it it actually doesn't make sense. Now, Mark, do you remember this whole like mining museum sort of vibe that they were going for at this point in the film? And it it had uh, that movie, the Valentine's Day movie vibe. So it's another throwback, I think, to classic horror. But it reminded me, and this is a shout out to Nate, when you went on your road trip through South Dakota, we went on a on a trip and we went to a mining museum and it was super cheesy and like they had these like dummies and stuff through there. And I mean, I have photos of it because this is the days when we used to take like actual, well, it was digital photos, but still not on our phones. Didn't it have that vibe? It was very similar with those cheesy, like animatronic people that kind of move and don't, I don't know. So kind of reminded me of the, log ride thing at the mall of america like the i don't know what it's called the log shoot or something no that's at valley fair but anyway so it's like an old mine and you're riding through it on a log so i thought that was a kind of interesting interesting scene yeah they were gonna shoot you know an urban legend about like the ride and whatever but of course the killer had other ideas and um, electrocuted to the guys and, you know. So I kept waiting for the, I don't know her name, you know her name, the Noxzema girl to show up because she was like the bad uh, villain from the first one. Rebecca Gayhart. Okay, Rebecca Gayhart. And she didn't make an appearance until the credits where she was a nurse at the uh, hospital where the the killer guy was. Yes, it's true. So... The film professor ended up being the bad guy because the main character, Jennifer Morrison's dad, was a documentary filmmaker who cast the deciding vote on the Hitchcock Award. He didn't win it. And so he's getting revenge on her 
but also everyone who worked on this on the Twin Brothers film so that he can steal the film and get a, apparently a three picture deal which wow if if that's the way Hollywood works if you can just like have a great short film and then get a three picture deal uh sign me up but I don't think that's how it works yeah it seemed a bit uh simplistic to think that I'm gonna take this movie to Hollywood and just <laughs> become a director or whatever that I don't know so he was the reason he was killing all these people is he had to steal this movie. So he killed every, he was trying to kill everyone who was involved with it so nobody would know that it wasn't really his. Yeah, I know. I know it's cheesy, Mark, but you know, I'm just going to go with the plot. Um also, we haven't mentioned this yet, but the cop from the first movie, what's her name, Mark? Her name is Loretta Divine. She is in this movie and she survives, thank God. And um, also Joey, Joey Lawrence survives. Yeah, I didn't really understand why he was even in the movie. Like, was he a student at the college or? <laughs> oh my God, Mark. You must have slept through this entire movie. <laughs> also, um, he was a red herring at, a, at one point. Okay, yeah. But he was involved in the end, like he snuck up on the guy and hit him with a chair and they fought and I thought he got shot and then like he fell in some grave. So, I mean, it was kind of a cool setting for the final scene because there's all these different movie sets. So like Joey Lawrence was like in an, in an alien ship and then he was in like a graveyard and all this different stuff. So that was kind of interesting. And as you said, as we were watching it, if you don't remember, it was sort of like, was it Scream 2? Where, you know, it was like the the play setting and you don't know what's real and whatever. I mean, I, I appreciated it. And there was a cool, you know, interesting scene at the end where there was a real gun and there was all these prop guns and somehow they got knocked, the prop guns got knocked over. So there was like... I don't know, 30 guns there with one real one. So everyone's in there just like trying to find it. It reminds me of the final showdown in Knives Out where they're like a prop knife versus a real knife. Remember? Yes. Yes. Very similar. All right. So Mark, let's rank this movie on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being you hated it, which I'm thinking you're leaning towards 10 being uh you think it's a perfect movie what's our scale for urban legends final cut i think it should be woes even though he never said it but he was in the movie i'm rolling my eyes so hard but okay fine how many woes do you give this film i'm gonna give it to woes i don't know i just i never got into it I don't know. I thought the script, the writing wasn't great. Uh, I don't know. I just, I didn't, it was entertaining, I guess, but it never really gripped me. So I'm giving it a two. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm giving it a four. I think it was enjoyable. As I said to Mark last night when I put this movie on, um, even if it's terrible, which I did look up before, the Rotten Tomatoes were not great. Even if it's terrible, a bad horror movie is better than, like, a decent anything sometimes. You know, like, I don't know. I'd rather watch a bad horror movie than a lot of things. So, I'm giving it a four. I I didn't hate it. I wasn't mad about it. I had a fun time. And there were tons of people who were featured in it before they hit their prime. Like, there's, like, literally five or six people in this movie who are now um have have major careers yeah and joy lawrence was in it too oh wow but this was pre-dancing with the stars so uh, it's true that's true no i looked he he took third in this third season he got third place so he i if i remember right he was he was pretty good yeah, I think he could dance. He was probably fine. Did you watch Blossom back in the day? This is what I really need to know. Yes, I believe I did, yeah. So did I. So, see? We can bond over that instead of this movie. So what was the backstory? Like, why was it all about Blossom? Like, why was Blossom so awesome? Oh, 
Mark, I don't know. Why do you ask me these questions? Maybe because she was just like a quirky teen and we needed someone to look up to? I'm going to look it up right now. Oh, good. We're answering the question of the universe, which is, why was Blossom worth watching, apparently? I don't know. So it says, Blossom Russo is a highly intelligent and spunky teenager. The youngest of three, she lives with her divorced musician father, Nick, eldest brother and recovering substance abuser, Anthony, and decidedly not so bright middle brother, Joey. Oh, remember her friend Six? Of course. Yeah, so... I still don't know why, I don't know, why it, the show revolves around Blossom, but whatever. I mean, I think that sounds like a reason to revolve around her. She's got a musician father, which would be interesting on its own. She's got a dumb, dumb brother, which is fun. And then also like an addict brother who's recovering. And also her best friend's name is Six. I think that enough could that alone could be enough for a show so i'm just seeing like the opening screen from blossom and now i remember the the theme song where they're like dancing <laughs> i don't remember remind me I, you'd, have, you'd have to see it you, you'll you'd remember it right away i don't know there's the i mean i just remember joey lawrence wearing like ripped jeans and maybe like a leather jacket or something and like doing the the running man is is that is that made up in my mind? I, I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> and I remember Six used to wear, like, you know, interesting hats and stuff. I don't know. I think I think Blossom wore the hats, if I'm not mistaken. I think they both did. So, I don't know. Listen, obviously we need things to watch, so tweet us and tell us what to watch, because we resorted to watching this movie last night. So, is which uh, streaming service is Blossom on? <laughs> oh, good question, because I don't know that it is available, actually. I know My Biolic uh, is famous now for being on Big Bang Theory and also famous for being an anti-vaxxer. So, there's that. Seriously? Wow. She's also a vegan. Um, you know, so, whatever. Blossom uh, has... Has levels. She has all sorts of parts of her personality, which we all do. Agreed. Glad we got to reminisce about Blossom. Oh, boy. Okay, so until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.